All right, folks, you know when you tell a guest to make themselves at home and they take it way too literally? Well, you're not alone. Today, we're diving into the chaotic world of r slash ask Reddit with Reddit stories about guests who have given disrespect a whole new meaning. All righty, let's dive in. Reddit, what is the most disrespectful thing a guest has done in your home? My best friend was staying with me and my husband for the weekend. Her and I went to a vineyard where we both got pretty drunk and go home to have a bonfire and have some friends over. I go to bed and my husband, who had not been drinking, takes some people home and locks up the house. I wake up the next morning to find my friend lying on my dining room floor, naked from the waist down with her urine-soaked pants next to her. After she leaves that day, my husband tells me she attempted to give him a BJ and when he refused, she told him, you know you want it. She was engaged to a woman and is now married to her. Needless to say, we are not friends anymore. Edit. So... As I'm changing the bed after my friend leaves, I discover she has peed all over the bed and it had gotten on the mattress. When I address this with her, she offers to have a new mattress sent to me and have my carpets cleaned since she had thrown up on them too. When she finally sends me an email apologizing, she adds a paragraph grasping at straws to justify her behavior. She thought everyone was drunk, but she guessed she was the only one. No, but we're all adults and put ourselves to bed when we should and also... She felt like she had intercourse, but there was no proof, and she felt violated. When I read that, I immediately texted her, demanding to know if she was implying that my husband sexually assaulted her. She said no, and that's not at all what she said. So I asked what she meant. My husband was not the only man at the house, and she had been all over my friend's boyfriend that evening also, so she could have been trying to implicate any guy. She told me to just forget it, and I assured her I would never forget any of this. Just to add, she weighs a considerable amount and was on her period at the time of the visit. I feel like if anyone had assaulted her in my very bright white dining room, I would have noticed. I sure as hell noticed the throw up and pee all over the place. Also, her girlfriend had complained to me about her tendency when drunk to inappropriately text her male friends naked pictures. I know how inappropriate she can be when she's had too much. I had a really hard time breaking up this friendship and I was trying to figure out how we could stay friends. However, when my husband asked me if I would be comfortable with him continuing a friendship if one of his friends did something like that to me, I knew exactly what I had to do. I unfriended her on Facebook, sent a breakup letter detailing why I would not be continuing our friendship, and blocked her number. Then she had the gall to tell me my services would no longer be needed as a bridesmaid in her wedding, like I was planning on being a bridesmaid after all that anyways. I feel like she was really trying to place blame elsewhere for her making a complete butt of herself. Oh my, talk about making the wrong kind of splash at a party. Peeing on the floor, making passes at the host's hubby, then laying down some CSI level misinformation, and you were meant to be a bridesmaid? After such a pee nominal performance? It's a shame you won't be at the wedding. She might need a hand unlocking the bathroom door. My partner's friend was staying with us and brought his large dog. One night, his dog tore up one of the bed pillows. Instead of letting us know, he just stuffed the pillow and feathers into the pillowcase to hide it. He left the next day and I went to wash the sheets. I pulled the pillow out of the case and completely covered the room in feathers. It was three months ago and I am still finding feathers floating around. We give him a lot of grief for it. Edit. I was just reminded about what happened a month later involving the same guest, Kevin. So Kevin comes back to stay with us for their fantasy draft. All the guys in the league are in town to draft and party, so we are hosting two guys, Kevin, and we'll call the other guy, Paul. I have known both for years. We all went to college together, so we were cool. Saturday is their big day to golf and draft, but it was also a really big day for me. I had been running for a year, never exercised before, and had trained hard for six weeks to run a 15K that Saturday. So the run goes great, and I'm lazy the rest of the day. Meanwhile, the guys are golfing, drinking, and gambling. They rush home to change and head to a specific wing place that has fantasy draft specials. I'm home when they come to change and I meet another member of the league, Mick, who has known Kevin since they were kids. He's pretty tipsy, but we talk about running and says he's been training for a full marathon that's in two weeks. They leave and I go to bed before they come back. They all come home pretty dinged up, which is totally fine. Turns out Mick is going to crash on the other couch because he definitely couldn't drive. My partner gets in the shower in our master bathroom that is only accessed through our master bedroom, which is super common. All of a sudden, someone busts through our door and into the bathroom. It's Mick. 
He starts vomiting chicken wings into the sink instead of the toilet that's right next to it. All the while, my partner is yelling at him to move to the toilet. Side note, we do have another bathroom that was closer to him and empty. Anyway, both Kevin and Paul rush to help and try to shove the food down the bathroom drain because, you know, we have a garbage disposal in our bathroom. Finally, they began scooping it out into a trash bag. I remained in bed with my back turned and pretended to be asleep. After the chicken sink fiasco, Mick settled down and passed out. My partner finally got into bed and apologized and we had a little laugh while beginning to fall asleep. Not even 60 seconds passed before the silence was broken by Mick screaming, I am going to crap myself! Of course you are, Mick, of course you are. He was ushered to the proper bathroom, used the toilet correctly to the best of our knowledge, and crisis averted. Right? Wrong. Fast forward 15 minutes to us being woken up by a heated argument in our living room. Mick was at it again, this time choosing the laundry room as the ideal spot to vomit. Thankfully, he was redirected away from my washer and dryer that I had just paid off and he threw up in the bathroom. He was convinced he was being guest of the year by choosing the washing machine instead of throwing up on the sheets. His argument was based off of the fact that water is connected to the washer. The washer is connected to the sewer, so on and so forth. Mick, your logic is freaking infallible. No one agreed for obvious reasons, but he is a lawyer, and he put together a pretty convincing argument in person. It was impressive. After that argument, he was found sitting in our garage in the dark because he felt unwelcome. The next morning, he left before anyone woke up and sent my partner a passive-aggressive apology. Thanks, Kevin, for inviting your friend to crash with us. Oh boy, Kevin, you really messed up on this one. And then, Mick, this dude's puke GPS needs serious recalibration. Someone please give this man a house map and a barf bag for next time. Kevin, let's add proper guest etiquette to your next fantasy draft, all right? My roommates and I lived in a basement suite in a house during our second year of university with the landlord upstairs. The landlord was the chillest landlord that ever existed and was fine with us throwing parties every weekend pretty much. She had rented to a group of musicians for years before us and was accustomed to the noise. One time, she came down the set of stairs connecting the upper and lower suites to drop off some mail. The door in our basement is normally locked from the outside, so we can't go upstairs through it. But she must have forgotten to lock it back up on her way out. Later that night, we noticed that one of our friends, John, had disappeared. His shoes were still by the door, so we assumed he had walked outside barefoot. We didn't really make much of it because he suddenly reappeared half an hour later. The next day, the landlord comes down and says that we had an escapee last night. We were all confused for a moment, but then it all clicked for us at the same time. John. She recounted the story of what happened to us. Turns out John had been feeling adventurous and without realizing what he was doing, opened the door to the upstairs and walked up. He made his way to the fridge, opened it and started eating handfuls of pie straight from the tin. Not only was she cool enough to not immediately call the police or put an end to our party, she also started talking to him. She asked him how old he was. He says, I'm 19. We are Canadian, so we are legal to drink. She follows up with, how long have you been 19? Thinking it was his birthday, which would explain the excessive drunkenness. His answer to that was, I've been 19 for two years. I'm from Campbell River, a small town in BC, where time moves incredibly slowly. After her laughing at his joke and finishing his handful of pie, she escorted him back downstairs like nothing had ever happened. Oh, John, apparently he's got Narnia at the back of his fridge and he's been 19 for two years because, you know, time is a myth in Campbell River. Barging into his landlord's suite for a handful of pie, now that's a way to leave a lasting impression. With charm like that, who needs doorbells, am I right? When I was 10, my mother and I moved across the country from one city to another, leaving all our friends behind. We didn't get to see many of them for years. When I was 13, I had to have knee surgery and when one of my mother's old friends, let's call her Fat Witch, found out, she said she was coming up to support me and my mother and help out while I was recovering. This was a woman who was like an aunt to me. The plan was that she'd stay with us for two weeks and help me while my mother was at work. She arrives the night before my surgery, has dinner and breakfast, and then goes with us to the hospital. She was being extremely supportive and helping me and my mother through our anxieties about the surgery. Unfortunately, that's where it stopped. When I woke up, Fat Witch had gone to get lunch and had eaten too much and gotten food poisoning or something. Then she had to go back to our place to sleep it off. Sounds legit enough, at the time. That night, my mother stayed to have dinner with me at the hospital. She got a call from Fat Witch, who was asking, Why aren't you here? 
I come up here to hang out with you and you're nowhere. My mother obviously replies that she's in the hospital with me. So Fat Witch says, he'll be fine. Let's go to a bar. Surgery didn't go as well as we thought it would. So I ended up staying in the hospital for a few more nights. Every night it'd be the same thing. Then when I finally got home, Fat Witch would start saying the same things and start fights with my mother saying, I came up to see you. Why aren't we going out? We're meant to be having fun. Last time I saw her, she was meant to be hanging out with me while my mother was working, but instead she was packing her crap while complaining about my mother on the phone to her husband. She didn't even say goodbye on the way out. Apparently, my mom got a text from Fat Witch recently saying she was in town and she wanted to hang out because she'd forgiven her. Mom obviously told her no and to not contact her again. Oh boy, here's a lesson in how not to support a friend. You'd think a knee surgery visit isn't exactly the ideal vacation package, but Fat Witch here clearly missed that memo. Post-op cocktail party, anyone? A now ex-friend, we'll call him X, fell on hard times and he and his dad needed a place to stay for three days between selling their house and moving into their new place. He asked if he could stay at my family home that I still had after my parents had passed. It was the house that they built that I grew up in and they died in. After three days, it turns out there's a hiccup at the new place and it's going to take another week. Okay, no biggie, but I bet a lot of you can already see where this is going. Meanwhile, the one rule I told him is that he can't have either one of his a-hole sisters over during this time. One of them is a notorious thief with a mile-long record, and the other is this lazy pushover who I actually kind of feel sorry for. The story I was told is that she got her kids taken away from her because she was too afraid to put up any kind of fight for them. She was afraid of her ex-boyfriend and his family. But she's also a pretty severe alcoholic and a klutz, so I don't want to have to come there and clean up after her, especially since I'm in recovery myself. So I had just one rule, no sisters. After about three months of excuse after excuse, I'm paying all the utilities the whole time, by the way, I finally decided that I needed to go down there and talk to them and see what the hell was up. We started to get some evidence that things were not good by his reports. First, we found out that they didn't sell their house by choice. Rather, they got evicted because the house was condemned by the city for being a health and fire hazard. Secondly, X may have slipped back into his own drug issues. And finally, while X was smart enough not to post pictures on Facebook, his idiot thief sister was not. Now, you might be asking why I let this go on for so long in the first place. The answer is that I'm a pretty trusting person by nature, and I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. Sure, I've gotten burned a few times because of this, but it mostly works out really well and people are usually very gracious when I help them out. Plus, X was one of my very best friends in the world. Someone who had been there for me after my parents died and someone I had helped out a lot in the past. I had no reason to suspect that this time would be any different. Until now. I get there and the first thing that hits me is the smell. Garbage, food, B.O. and animals. I go in and... The place is just completely freaking trashed. There's garbage everywhere. Old food containers piled around the couch. Paint speckled all over the living room. X fancies himself an artist. Evidence of X's drug use everywhere. Various shredded and destroyed bits of bedding and clothing. There was crap and piss stains in the carpet. Not only are the two sisters there, but their crappy, untrained dogs are as well. The carpet was brand new, too. It cost $10,000 to install. Oh, and all the closets and drawers had clearly been rifled through. The list of what was destroyed and missing is way too long to remember everything, so I'll just hit the highlights. A handmade quilt that my grandmother and her mother made together was shredded, and I mean into little bits. Two expensive matching jackets that belonged to my parents that held fond memories for me was shredded. X and fam had decided to let the dogs use them as beds. A $500 bottle of tequila that was my parents that me and my wife had saved for a very special occasion. It was going to be a wedding gift for two close friends. Gone. X says he had no idea what could have happened to it. Gee, I wonder. A hand-stitched lace tablecloth that had been in my family for generations was also used as a dog bed. This, fortunately, was salvageable. But it had been in the back of a closet, all bundled up in paper and twine. So they had to dig that out, unwrap it and intentionally decide it was dog bed material. The whole house was infested with fleas. I confront X about all of this, and he starts trying to blame it all on anything and anyone except himself, including me. He starts yelling at me and trying to get me to have a physical fight with him. 
He was doing that stupid thing guys do to try to appear intimidating by getting so close to my face that our noses are actually touching. I have no reason to be afraid of him since I'm now healthy and fit, and X looks like a skeleton wrapped in a sheet. I've had my own anger issues in the past, so I'm a little scared that I might lose control and actually severely hurt him. I step away, tell him to get control of himself and calm down, which was a statement as much for me as it was for him, and I go take a walk. I eventually got them out after a couple of days, after they made a half-assed attempt at cleaning up, but made no offers whatsoever to pay for the thousands of dollars of damage and missing property. Needless to say, we are no longer friends. Hey, wait! Before you go off chasing after your next internet rabbit hole, give that like button a quick little smack. And if you're feeling particularly adventurous today, why not dance with the subscribe button? Join our band of misfits here and let's share the laughter. Anyways, stay safe out there in that crazy world. Much love. Peace.